In this video, I'll introduce the finite difference method. This is the most common alternative to the shooting method for boundary value problems. After studying this video, you should be able to formulate the finite difference method for a boundary value problem and use MATLAB to implement the finite difference method for a linear boundary value problem. We'll do a nonlinear problem in the next video. So the finite difference method is also a new combination of tools that we already have, strategies we've already used for other problems in this class. The basic idea is as follows. If this is our ODE solution over here, y of x, we will divide the solution domain into a series of discrete nodes separated by delta x. So we might have 1, 2, 3, 4, plus or boundary conditions, 5, 6. So 6 nodes, each node separated by some spacing, delta x. And then for each value of the ODE function at each node, we will write the differential equation using the finite difference formulas that we developed earlier for derivative approximations. Finally, we'll apply the boundary conditions and use that to write a system of algebraic equations in matrix form. If it's a linear differential equation, that resulting system of algebraic equations will be a system of linear equations, and we can solve using something like left division or Gauss-Seidel, or any of the other techniques that we developed for linear systems of equations. If it's a nonlinear system of differential equations, or if it's a nonlinear differential equation, we'll end up solving a system of nonlinear algebraic equations. And we can use newton raphson iteration for that, and I'll go over that in the next video. So this is our basic strategy how it works is going to be problem specific. So let's go ahead and look at an example problem. Here's that same differential equation describing the deflection of a simply supported beam with a constant distributed load and the same boundary conditions. We're going to solve this problem this time using the finite difference method with a discrete values at delta x equals 0.5. So the first step is to do what we call discretizing the domain. So we'll imagine we have our domain, which goes in this problem from 0 to 3. So here's 0, and here's 3. And using delta x equals 0.5, we're going to have values of 0, 0 0.5, 1.0, 1.5, 2.0, and 2.5. So we're going to set this up to solve for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 unknown y values of the solution. And the way that we're going to do that is using a finite difference approximation for the derivatives in our differential equation. Now this differential equation only has one derivative term and that's the second derivative of y with respect to x. So what we'll do is we'll plug in that finite difference approximation for that second derivative and then we have some algebra to do. So let's go through that. So I'm going to plug that in to the differential equation and we get EI times yi plus 1 minus 2yi plus yi minus 1 all over. And now the h now is our delta x. So it's delta x squared is equal to wl and then it will be the ith value of x. over 2, 
minus w times the ith value of x squared over 2. So if I multiply through by delta x squared and divide through by ei, this simplifies to, I'll rearrange a little bit, and we get y i minus 1 minus 2 y i plus y i plus 1 is equal to w times delta x squared divided by 2 e i times L X I minus X I squared. So for each of the ith nodes, so here we have node 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so we have I going from 1 to 5, and for each of those ith nodes, we have a linear equation for Y I minus 1, Y I, and Y I plus 1. So note, at node 1, our y i minus 1 is equal to y naught, or our boundary condition. And at node 5, our y i plus 1 is equal to y l, which is our other boundary condition. And so we'll put all this together in matrix form and here's what we have so again that equation was y i minus 1 minus 2 times y i plus y i plus 1 is equal to w times delta x squared over 2 e i times l x i minus x i squared. So writing down a matrix form we see coming down we have the negative two values on the diagonal because those correspond to the coefficient times y i so on and the way that I've set this up is y one here is equal to our y naught and y seven is equal to y l so our five unknown y's are the values at y2 through y6. So our negative 2 is going to be on the diagonal, since that corresponds to the yi. And then we have a coefficient of 1 and 1 on the off diagonals, and the rest is all 0. All times are node values, or five unknown node values, and then this term factors out of the right-hand side vector, and we see our boundary conditions, y1 and y7, just subtracting, so the yi minus 1 for the first equation, or the yi plus 1 for the last equation, subtracting those over on the right-hand side. So everything on the right-hand side is known. These x values are the values of the x points, here in our discretized domain and I guess this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and our unknown values are 2 through 6. So those are our x values. They're known. Our boundary conditions are known. So everything on the right hand side is known. And then we just need to solve this linear system for the y values. And we know how to do that in MATLAB. There's some important notes here. One is that the resulting linear system we have here is problem specific. So this was developed for this specific problem. The right hand side vector is characteristic of the specific differential equation that we're solving. Also, the coefficient matrix is characteristic of the specific differential equation that we're solving. It's a fairly simple coefficient matrix with the negative 2 on the diagonals and the 1s on the off diagonals because all we had was that one second order derivative of y. We can 
we do know that the size of the system is dependent on the choice for delta x. So the size of our system is a 5 by 5 because we had delta x equal to 0 0.5 and that resulted in 5 internal nodes. Lastly, we can say that the coefficient matrix will be tridiagonal when we're using second order finite difference approximations because they're always using the yi minus 1 term and the yi plus 1 term. If we were to use fourth order finite difference approximations, we'd wind up with a pentadiagonal or five diagonal matrix because you might recall those fourth order finite difference approximations look two points to the left and two points to the right. So let's look at the MATLAB code to solve this. One thing you'll see here is we've had to do quite a bit of work by hand to derive this matrix. We really need to get to this point understanding what this matrix is going to look like before we start working in MATLAB for this method. So here's our MATLAB code. We've got our boundary conditions defined. And the way that I've set this up is we'll actually set our delta x by defining the number of nodes. So we can change that number of nodes easily. Then using that to set up our discrete x values. and finding delta x from that. And then we'll also get our x values for our internal nodes. Because remember, we know the x values, or we know the y values at the boundaries. The first and the last node are from the boundary conditions. So the next step is to set up our coefficient matrix. Now, we know that if we have seven nodes, the first and last node are known by the boundary conditions, so we're going to have n minus 2, or a 5 by 5 system. And then I'm going to use a built-in MATLAB function called spdiags, and that is short for sparse diagonals. And we're going to set, use this function to set up a, our coefficient matrix. And the way this function works is we start by setting up a matrix of columns and each column contains the diagonal values. So here we have a column of ones, a column of negative twos, and a column of ones. And those correspond to the diagonal of ones, the diagonal of negative twos, and the diagonal of ones that we're going to have in our coefficient matrix. Then the spdiags command, the way that works is we give it those that input of a matrix with columns of diagonal values. And this input, that's negative 1, 0, 1, using the column operator, means we're going to put the first column of diag vowels into the negative 1 diagonal, so 1 below the main diagonal. The second column of diag vowels is going to go to the main diagonal, that corresponds to the zero in the second input, and the third column of diag vowels is going to go to the plus one diagonal, or the diagonal above the main diagonal. The last step here, these last two inputs just set up the size, so this is the size of the matrix that SP diags create. So setting up this matrix is the exact same as this alternative code I've included over here. If you're more comfortable with for loops, there's not that much of an efficiency gain for relatively small systems using spdiags. So you can do the same thing. That spdiags function is doing the same thing as these two for loops. You can also use those to understand how spdiags is working. The next step is just to calculate that right-hand side vector. Again, that's this vector here. So we calculate that right-hand side vector. And one thing you'll notice is because those initial condition, or sorry, because the boundary conditions are zero in that right-hand side vector, I left off the boundary conditions because and only because they are zero. 
And lastly, we can use left division to solve for the y values at the internal nodes and then do a concatenation to add the internal nodes to the first value for the first boundary condition and the last value for the second boundary condition and just put those internal nodes in between in a vector so now we have a column vector of all our y values so running this and then I plotted the results along with our results from the previous meta video and the shooting method and the first figure here shows our results for the problem as given with the find a difference method using a delta x equals 0 0.5 and if you run the code and zoom in you'll see that there's definitely uh, it's not accurate compared to the shooting method solution with ODE45 which is what we'd expect since ODE45 is a higher order method than a second order accurate finite difference and also uh, the analytical solution. If we decrease delta x again to 0.25 so again cutting delta x in half we actually see with the green diamonds here we get a much better result qualitatively accurate in other words, you can't see the difference on the graph, really. And uh, that is the accuracy behavior that we're going to get since this is a order h squared finite difference method because we used finite difference approximations that were order h squared in order to derive that system of algebraic equations. So just to get more of a handle on why, on how the uh, system of algebraic equations we develop is problem specific, let's look at another example just formulating this. Uh, you can work, play with this MATLAB code to make sure you understand that MATLAB implementation. So here's another boundary value problem. The second derivative of y with respect to x plus x times dy dx plus y is equal to 2x squared. And again, this is a linear boundary value problem because we don't see anything but a linear combination of the function y and its derivatives. And we're going to solve this with boundary conditions of y naught and y at 0, 0 0.9 equal to 1. And again, we'll start by discretizing the domain. This time, let's use a delta x equal to 0 0.1. So we're going to first imagine our domain here and we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 internal nodes, sorry, 8 internal nodes actually. So starting with 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and 0 0.9. So there's our nodes, and we're going to have eight internal nodes. So this will be an 8 by 8 system. So what's different about this function now is we have a second derivative of y with respect to x and a first derivative of y with respect to x and y. So the result's going to look a little different. So here's our finite difference approximations that we'll use. And we'll need the second derivative approximation and the first derivative approximation using second order accurate methods for both so that this will be a second order accurate finite difference method. So we'll plug those in. So for our first derivative, we get, sorry, for our first derivative term, we get y i plus 1 minus 2yi plus yi minus 1 all over delta x squared plus xi times 
y i plus 1 minus y i minus 1 all over 2 delta x plus y, so y i is equal to 2 x i squared. So that's now an algebraic equation for the y value at each of the ith nodes, each of these eight internal nodes in our solution. So just to simplify this algebraically, I'm going to multiply through by 2 times delta x squared and when I do that I get 2yi plus 1 minus 4yi plus 2yi minus 1, that's what that first term becomes, plus xi times delta x times yi plus 1 minus xi times delta x times yi minus 1 plus 2 delta x squared times yi equal to 4 delta x squared xi squared. Next we'll collect like terms. We'll bring our yi minus 1 term first. And so for our yi minus 1 term, the coefficients looking through is we have a 2 and over here we have minus xi delta x. Then for our yi terms, we have a negative 4 plus 2 delta x squared. And then we have, for our yi plus 1 terms, we have an x, sorry, a 2 again, plus xi delta x. And all of that is equal to 4 times delta x squared xi squared. So now let's take this general equation and write that in matrix form for all of our eight nodes. So writing the system in matrix form, we have negative 3.98 is the same going all the way down on the diagonals and that's the negative 4 plus 2 delta x squared or negative 4 plus 2 times 0 0.1 squared. So that's the same for every equation. But then you see the xi's are in the terms, xi is in the terms for yi minus 1 coefficient and the coefficient for yi plus 1. And so you see that going down the diagonals, we have 2.01, 2.02, 2.03. Basically, those diagonals are increasing, or the lower diagonal is decreasing as xi increases going through the nodes. The first and last values on the right-hand side, again, this is going to have that right hand side value but minus the y naught or the first bc times its coefficient 2 minus xi delta x and the last value is going to be minus yn which is times 2 plus xi delta x so that's why those values are so different here the bottom line here is that this linear system is very different from the linear system that we solved for the first example. And as I mentioned before, that's always going to be the case. The linear system that you solve is a direct result of the differential equation that you're solving and how what the size of the system is related to what is your delta x value and 
what types of derivative terms are in that differential equation, and what derivative approximate finite difference approximations you use for those derivatives are what determine the end shape of this matrix. So in general, the best approach is to formulate the matrix in general terms, so something like here for this equation, and then use that in MATLAB to calculate the elements. That way you can change delta x easily. Also, you don't there's no precision lost here um, for this case, but in general you wouldn't want to lose any precision by calculating numbers by hand. And that concludes this video.